Everton have sort of been linked or have been muted as a possible target for John Texter mm. um, to, to acquire or to invest in or to, to get involved in. And we've seen that over the course of the last couple of weeks. However... He is already, he's, I mean, he's engaged the investment banking firm Rain to actively seek a buyer for his his 45% stake in Crystal Palace. We mentioned earlier, he owns a little bit of Crystal Palace, 45%. He owns Botafogo in Brazilian Serie A. He owns Lyon. He owns Molenbeek in, in the Belgian Pro League. He's already sort of suggested that he wants to buy another Premier League club. Everton, he's suggested a one he particularly admires. He's reached the conclusion that it's simply not the perfect fit at Crystal Palace. Why Why would he want to divest his interest in Crystal Palace and then quickly try and get involved in Everton? Is this a control thing? Well, it is a control thing, I think. I think, you know, he wants to have the stable of players that are in his system in terms of the multi-club ownership, which we were just talking about. Yeah, And he wants to have the ability to kind of um, dictate it from the top from my, his biggest club that he has actually which is currently Crystal Palace I would suggest although you could argue Leon, Leon yeah. is you know not far behind or perhaps in front Best, bearing it's a Premier League club and the finance involved I would say it was Crystal Palace that is more important to him the problem he has and the problem Everton have is that it looks like well I think we're pretty much assured of this that Everton need a new owner right they need a new owner they are you know really kind of up against it financially and um it's, it, it, I, I mean listen the, we've had a lot of debates about Everton over the course yeah. of the last 48 hours but I speaking to the I did speak to the club yesterday and they admit they, they do need to sell but they're only going to sell their players at the right price yeah and there are obviously PSR problems but you know at the same time they, they think the clubs, that at this moment in time but, all, they but the problem operate. is they know all, well they need to know that all the buying clubs know their position. They know their position. So therefore, they're compromised in terms of value of their players. Forget it, no matter what they say. But John Texter, um, who owns 45% of Crystal Palace, he, he can't own both. So he has to sell that. So the problem is, I can't see how he can be an owner of Everton when he has the, this massive stake at Palace. Well, he can't. He yeah. can't. Of course he can't. So... You know, in terms of him selling that uh, an inflated price to what he bought it for, isn't going to happen. So I don't see that route for Everton. Um, but I can understand why Texter would like to be in the ownership of Everton. Do you think he's got the money to be able to invest in Everton? Well, I think that's that's debatable because um, you know that is a that is a massive investment, not just in terms of um, the ownership of it, but taking it forward. Um, to to be the club that it needs to be, that is going to take um, uh, a hell of a, a lot of money. Eighty seven point five million he bought his share holding for. Hold, holding for. If he sells it, how much is he going to get for it? Is he going to is he going to make a profit on it in the four years or three years that he's been involved in 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 Crystal Palace? Well, from my <laughs> experience, and I've had many uh, of takeovers, they take a long, long time, and actually. Um, I can't see the time scale being anywhere near it. And I think him making noises about Everton um, is probably wishful thinking, I would suggest. Um, the suggestion is is that Crystal Palace uh, are basically run by Steve Parrish, right? He's the executive chairman. So yeah, he, of course. he is in charge and he yeah. makes most of the decisions. Yeah. And Texas Company has 45% in terms of ownership, but only around about a quarter of the say, 25% of, of, the, of what happens there. Um, he's tried to buy an extra 5% in order to become the majority owner and no one at the moment will let him do that. Yeah, but I don't think that would change his position actually too much from the, in the power structure there. Really? How? No, I don't think so. Not from my understanding. I, I'm not going to go into detail, but all I would say is that their their relationship, uh, Parish and Texas, I think is okay. I don't think it's like a, 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 a partnership that's kind of fell apart. But he just wants to call the shots. I think that's I think that's the truth of it, and I think he wants to call the shots in terms of the stable that he has underneath, i.e., players coming into Palace or maybe coming out of Palace into his stable, and I think there is some probably pushback on that uh, from them. But all I would say um, is that um, that Everton worries me a little bit because. Uh, I think Sean done a terrific job. I don't know. Did they win 12 games in the he end? Did, he did brilliantly. You know, in, in such adversity and such pressure on them. 
Um, and um, it looks to me like they're going to have a very, very similar season, if not worse, because I think the, the clubs coming up are going to be much more Understandably, though, the, fans, the fans are quite sensitive to that. The, the idea that people talk about them so much and then sort of almost alerts everybody to the problems. Isn't it? It's almost like they feel, and, I, and it really isn't this, but I think sometimes the fans do believe that you're sort of almost kicking them when they're down. Yeah. But there is a... The, the, the concern, I think, from all of us is because we have grown up watching Everton as being one of the leading clubs. Then obviously they've struggled for probably 30 years now, really. I mean, there's not been many great periods, has there, over the course of that time. And because last season they were involved in problems with PSR and ended up getting points deducted. But actually, if they hadn't have had their points deducted last year... They'd have been in a very stable position. Oh, yeah. De- yeah, a decent season. You know, mid-table. But not... You know, you still think of Everton as one of the big clubs uh, in this country. And I think that's what uh, sort of... Where we kind of, in our thinking, particularly someone as old as myself, I'm like, yeah, Everton a massive club. And every, every time I went there, the it was like, you know you're a big club. Mm-hmm. You know, the fan base, the way the stadium is. You know, they've also got this issue of moving into a new stadium. Now, I don't know when it's going to be ready... But that is always, always awkward. Arsenal, Spurs, Reading, when I was at Reading, going to that stadium, getting used to it. You know, when Spurs had the thing at Wembley and then back to, you know, it's like a real kind of, it disrupts the balance of a, of a, of a team and a club moving to a new stadium. They're going to have that. Don't think it's all going to be, you know, rosy when we move into the new stadium. It's a great stadium. On AM, on DAB, via the TalkSport app and on your smart speaker. TalkSport.